Good evening ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the final round here at the SBR uh, Mazda MX-5 Championship. My name is JB and for the final time this evening we're going to be taking you through tonight's proceedings. But before we do anything else, let's take a look. Let's see this chat which is full of a lot of people. Let's take a look at the championship standings, try and get someone who's going to stay in pit lane for a little bit longer. Where are my championship standings? Are they hidden? So, the current championship standings, Luke Mitchell leads away with 234 points. There's still time, though, for Rob to beat him today. We will see what happens in the racing. Rob is in P2, ahead of Victor, who's in P3. Kale is in P4. Olive is in P5. And Fred is in P6. Zach has since left the league, so he is not in P7. Dill Price is actually in 7th. Phil Wilson is in P8. Luke Crook, Luke is not racing today. He's in P9. And P11 is Keith Smith. P12 is Ballant, but he's not racing today. P13 is Ben. P14 is Neil, who also isn't racing today. And P15 is Bruno. So we're here at the final race of the final race of the season. Here in Blue Moon. Blue Moon. There we go. Blue Moon. Speedway, which is like an additive version of a NASCAR track by the looks of it. So, this looks like it's going to be a bit of fun. A lot of corner cutting, pretty simple track in the way of not really many heavy braking zones. A lot of speed being carried on as we go onto the Blue Moon Bay banking and switching back through the final corner. Got to hold on to the car. And look at that full on drift there from Wilson. As he heads now towards turn one, it's really interesting to see what the drivers do for practice. And Wilson up to P4. This track might suit Wilson. He struggled pretty, pretty heavily in the season, but I think this track will suit him. He's going to have a, a lot of speed carried through turns like this. Turn one into the heavy braking zone of two. Very heavy braking zone. Cut the corner heavily there. Uh, another heavy braking zone of three. There you go, see. Relatively light braking zone into four. Relatively light because you're already going quite slow speed, but it's quite tight as well, so it will be a couple of gear shifts down. Through the little kink of five. Not really a turn, but it is now. And a sharp 90 degree to the left of six. There we go. Skipping up onto the grass, that can easily be done in the race. This could be quite difficult for the 15 minute sprint race. Up onto the penultimate corner, through that, not really much of a corner now, because you're going straight and into the final corner. Up onto the final banking. This will be a bit of fun as he crosses the line. It seems a relatively quick lap. It's going to be a 1.15.9, so just shy of Wilson's previous lap. So drivers all getting their eye in. Should be heading to qualifying in just a minute's time. So as that ticks up, we should hit qualifying in just a moment. That's Ollie Polly with the Jensen button helmet. One last time, last week, he won the, won the race that uh, he was going to win on track and then uh, penalty for the game absolutely destroyed him uh, but Phil Mitchell decided that Phil Mitchell sorry Luke Mitchell decided you know what I'm not happy with that so I'm going to give him the win anyway because that's fair look at this wonderful camera here following along the banking that's great that's going to be great fun oh skipping to all those Kale using all the time and more into the barrier once more for Kale so we'll be heading to qualifying in just a moment's time. The five minute qualifying session here at Blue Moon Bay. That's going to get difficult to say. For the 11th and penultimate round of the season here at the Mazda RX 5s. I think uh, there was talk about potentially replacing the MX 5 as another car for the next season. We will see what happens. It'll be interesting to see whether they do replace it. I've always been part of the. Uh, 
part of the, the crowd that say every season we should have different cars. Because I like different cars. All the cars produce good racing here on GT Sport, so... It's always a laugh to see. Little wiggle there. And thus the qualifier begins. Five minutes of qualifying here at Blue Moon Bay for the 11th round of the season. The final qualifying session of the Mazda MX-5 season as we see okay or crash just as we go to the title screen. Five minutes now. You may be able to hear it twice. If you can, that's going to annoy me. Because that means I've got to turn it down. <laughs> it's just down to the fact that I'm still using my other mic. So, we will see what goes on. Quickly look at the stream on my phone. Take a little look at what's going on. See lots of slipstream, that's going to be the key for this qualifying session, I believe. So we're looking at Rob, let's get rid of that. Oh, let's get rid of that. There we go. So, lots of slipstreaming, that's going to be the key for this qualifying session. Carrying the speed on the banking and on the straights, as well as, um, as, well as on, the, uh, on the, the quick bits, you know? Whoops. Shush, phone. Ah, oh, good luck to all the drivers in the chat. Yes, yes, that's what we want. So, as we head now on to the final qualifying session, we're going to be following uh, Rob, who's a championship contender right now. He's off the banking. Is he giving up on his initial lap? Look at the train forming already. Yano Trilli would be proud as we're watching Fred trying to overtake Rob. So drivers flying through. And look at this. I love this angle. So I wonder if Rob is choosing not to officially do a qualifying lap on this first run and is going to try and wait and slipstream with Fred through the infield section now. This is where it could all get a bit booky as we follow the number 13, Fred. And what can he do as he tries to... Oh, and off goes Luke Mitchell. Luke Mitchell bailing out the way. Fred will lead us away. This is a relatively quick lap around here, so I reckon we'll get about... We should get two laps in. So we're still watching what Fred can do, the first drivers do a qualifying lap. And look at the speed he carried through there, but a slight understeer there for Rob, who was following. And now through the final corner, whoa, a little wiggle there as they come back on from the banking. Rob really uncomfortable there. Here comes Fred as we follow him on. First car in shot. Crossing the line in just a moment's time. Now and Fred leads us away. No, Kale gets a slipstream from P3 on track into P1. And drivers all moving around. Rob really suffering in that one. And then there's Luke Mitchell who has fallen to the back. Is this going to be his worst qualifying session of the season? Where can he go? He's had damage. I think he's hit the wall a little bit harder than before he would have. I think we will get another qualifying lap. Whether these cars can take it or not, we will find out. Let's jump on board with uh, Price. Price is overtaking someone. is going to be putting on as much of a show today as he can do in the orange car. Oh, and into the wall. Well, I've said that pretty badly, haven't I? That's the, that's the term of a proper commentator's curse. Let's jump back over the top. Fred is now second in the line. And that's interesting. Rob has gone straight for it. So I wonder if he did bail out that qualifying that time. He will get another. Crossing the line now. Rob improves by two tenths of a second. He's now leading. Can he take the championship charge and beat out this man, Luke Mitchell? So Luke Mitchell 
coming now across the line. He's gonna, oh, he's really struggling this time around. He's two seconds off the mark. With 21 seconds left to go. The score did, SD. Sorry, SC even. What can he do as he's looking to improve? Skimming the grass there, will not help him at all. Oh, and Rob's off. Victor Pitts with one minute, one second to go. Final two minutes, finish your laps and crack on, kids. That's interesting, has Rob thrown it away? See Kale going very close to the wall there. Now running up towards the line once more, this could be Fred, Kale and Scolded. S sorry, Scolded, oh I'm lying about SC. Crossing the line, Fred improves but not enough. And so does SC, but oh, just shy. Anyone got it in them to beat Rob? It doesn't look like they can. Wilson and Mitchell crossing the line. And oh, Mitchell does do it. Mitchell does do it by quite a margin. <laughs> one tenth of a second. Beating him, beating out Rob. That's going to be fun into turn one. final qualifying session of the season is done we are now completely and utterly done for qualifying here in the MTCC oh, what am I on about? in the uh, SBR Master MX5 Championship and we'll be heading to have some fun in the sprint race, the 15 minute sprint race then the next time the reverse grid race for I think about 20, 25 laps I think we're going to get we're going to get a fair few laps So just one more minute left of qualifying, and that's just because we've got one driver in pit lane. Only got 10 drivers racing tonight, which is a little bit disappointing, but you know. Run through the full grid quickly for 45 seconds. Luke Mitchell in P1, ahead of Groot in P2. SC is in P3, and Kale is in P4. John is in P5, and Fred is in P6. Dylan is in P7, Ollie Polly is in P8. Uh, Wilson is in P9 and Victor is in P10 unfortunately back of the grid for Victor this time out Let's go sit with Victor in pit lane shall we? It's in the double zero stand, <laughs> interesting And the time has elapsed, and now qualifying is over. Ten drivers are getting ready to race here in the Blue Moon Bay Speedway. Infield A2. Three million and seven. <laughs> get ready for this 15 minute sprint race. This is going to be cracking as they get ready to go racing here. Grid packed up. All of a bit of fun. And get ready to see what the drivers can do. We will not see the lights as we often do here in the Masters. The drivers are away at some point when I turn 80. There they go. It's a great start from Rob initially off the line. It's a great launch from Rob as he goes to race against Luke Mitchell into one. They all get tuck into the slipstream. It's like Mexico in Formula One all over again. No one wants to be on pole positions. They head through towards turn one. Anyone who's brave to shuck it up the inside. And there is a few in the background. It seems to be Kale trying to get up into P3. Rob's up wide. Rob is up wide. He's going to lose that position. It's the next corner. is a right hander. Now into right hand. Rob is just lost a position to SC. Luke Mitchell holds the lead into turn three. And everyone bailing into the infield section now as they all try and make their way through 10 drivers battling for the championship only realistically about two can win 
but we will see what happens in itself. Why? That seems to be Victor. He, can he catch it? He did catch it. Very well caught for the Bulgarians. I believe Bulgarian. They now come flying down towards the final corner. Oh, and everyone's off the track, including Rob. Rob and SC off the track. SC making contact with the wall there. Someone else as well. It seems to be Fred making contact with the wall with the pink, with the pink wheels. Little wiggle there from KL has really affected everyone as they all come through and rob into the wall. Three wide as KL's dropping further back now between Fred and what seemed to be John. Everyone now going for it as they try and overtake everyone else. Oddy Potty, last time's winner, is going to be trying to resolve that state and win again. But Luke Mitchell, as always, checking out from P1, as he so often does in the sprint race. A little bit of, uh, of lagging there as the Greek driver tries to pass the Norwegian. Contact, slight kiss there between the Norwegian and then the SC in the foreground is really starting to struggle already. So carrying too much speed there and obviously all this time, the longer they battle, the more time it's going to be for Rob to come closer from P5. So drivers putting as much power on as they can, all hitting the wall. Little wiggle there from Oli Polly, and Olaf is really struggling there. Now on to the fly-by-wire, as we watch drivers all filtering back, we're going to jump back to P6 with Fred to see if he can slipstream his way through. So it's Fred versus Rob into one who's braver on the speed it does seem to be Fred who's got the better line up the inside Rob struggling on the banking and into two it's a fantastic move oh no it's not as fantastic as I thought it would be first replay of the day shall we see it let's see it from Fred's point of view just carries way too much speed there cuts across the curb it throws him into the wall there goes Rob and he slides and into the other wall car resetting slightly and that the day was done down to P10 for Fred a penalty there for SC a one tenth penalty so he will have to slow down by a tenth just go a little bit slower out one of the corners that's what I would do but he's under pressure now by five tenths from Ollie Polly who's trying to put pressure on everyone else drivers are being a little bit liberal with track limits at that, at that final corner there. Oddy Polly, Jensen Button, pink helmet as he so often carries is about to head into one. Is he going to be brave like Fred was or is he going to try his hardest to hold that position? Definitely gaining on SC as they head into breaking zone. And a much better line than SC. Gained a fair few amount of attempts there. You're going to chuck it out of the inside here. It's a bit of a risky move, bit of a half assed move, but he did not make contact with the car in front. Norway versus Britain. So they're battling as hard as they can. Still battling again. It seems that SC has got a better run in the infield than Oli has. So I wonder if Olaf has got a. Um, is that another penalty for SC? No? Just ghosted randomly. Okay. So into one now, five laps completed with a fair few minutes to go. So all the drivers putting as much pressure on each other as possible. It seems that Rob's struggling from starting on the front row of the grid. He's really struggling. But, oh, slide there from SC as he carries so much more speed. And Oli Polly, come on, Olive, what can you do to pass him? The number 95 car trying to pass the green car ahead. 
I did just do that just to look at the Jensen Button helmet. So we watch the planes fly above. We're going to jump on board with Ollie and Olaf. What can he do? Keep an eye on all the battles on the track map at the top. Carrying so much speed through there. He's going to try and chuck it up the inside. Is he going to manage to do it at some point? Past 100 metre braking board, there's not much braking going on here. There's a lane, a nice wiggle there as they come back onto the circuit from the banking. And Olive, I think he had to brush the brake that time around. Let's try and get the onboard car information as we look at Olive now. So he's trying to pass SC ahead. He's doing his best, if he can, to get through. He carries so much more, more speed 138 miles an hour. Just and with the toe as well, braking hard, just past the meter board. Look at the lack of brake he puts in. So much little brake. Oh, he's gone full rally cross there as he tries to carry up. And they've all caught up to Luke Mitchell in all this time. Try and get the proper it. They're starting to catch up to Luke Mitchell ahead. Which is going to start to affect um, SC. I wonder what happened to Luke. He wouldn't have backed off, would he? Of course he wouldn't. This is Luke Mitchell we're talking about. He never backs off for anyone. So as the drivers all filter back onto the track, up on the banking, you've got to keep this wheel as straight as possible doing that. You do not want to mess that one up. The transfer from, tar from concrete to tarmac to I don't know, yellow. It's not even yellow, it's like pink. It's a weird pink, isn't it? So as they come up onto the seventh lap of the race, remember, we should get about 15 laps in this race due to the uh, due to the nature of the track. Everything here about it shouts as we're looking at it. 1.2 seconds separate the lead. It seems that Olive has had to back off just a little bit to preserve his car. Let's check in with Kale, who's about to be overtaken by Victor if they're not careful. These two have got history on track. In the last round, it all reached a boiling point. But yet, the stewards were not spoken to. Kale versus Victor. Up the inside comes Victor. It's a bit of a bit of an iffy move. He does make it. He does filter him out wide, but no problem there. Brilliant racing between the two of these drivers. The blue car and the green car had a race as they come through. It's not for the Milky Way advert. But that's the red car and the blue car. And that could happen in a bit if Dill Price is going to catch up. And off the track goes Victor. And he's definitely gained an the advantage there by going off the track. Gained an the advantage, but it did not make it stick. Let's go on board with Victor here. That's not the camera angle I want. That's the one I want. I hold it. Do I get different camera angles? No? So... Six tenths of a second at the start of the straight. It seems that Kale's built for straight line speed. Look at the speed difference. He's actually gaining time on the straight, is Kale. He's gained a tenth. Just more than a tenth into turn one. And Kale seems to be very protected into turn one. Let's jump back up with the leaders, though. Because side by side, Oli Polly is going to try and make the move on SC. Remember, they've got to keep being smart here got to pass and lose as little as time as possible from the leader so they can try and catch up does Oli Polly get through he does get through Oliver is now the fastest man on track and the man in P2 so transferring now from the banking onto concrete once more onto the infield track now following the fly by wire cam. This camera's great. On to lap 9 out of God knows how many should get about 13 or 14 laps as they come into turn 1 now. Olive under pressure from SC. Let's jump on board with SC. He tries to make a move. Does the man. This is the British driver in the British racing green car. him in the apexes, being liberal with the apexes, he absolutely munching up those apexes. 
as he tries to come and pass the Norwegian. There it is, another bite of the apex, yum. As he tries to put as much pressure on the back of the MX-5 as possible. Look at that four wheel drift as he gets braking, a lot of weight transfer slipping to one side and it just wasn't comfortable for the MX-5. He's going to lose time to the Norwegian in front. As now they come through the penultimate corner and into final corner. It does seem that these drivers are very concentrated, very calculated. Excuse me. Oh, this is cursed work at night, sir. So we're going to jump back on board with oh, Rob, who's trying to car pass uh, the Greek driver of John. Rob has had some really bad luck into this corner here, just going up onto marbles. Can he try and get underneath the Greek driver? There's going to be contact. And well done for um, John to be able to hold that. Now they put further on more power, more pressure to try and catch it to leave. Whew. Excuse me. My apologies for just waking up. Lap 10 completed. Two minutes on the clock to complete now. Two minutes 40. We'll jump back up and look at the battle for the podium. Not really been touched, these three has. It seems to be very pack racing esque here and a lot of slide there from the British racing green car. Could it, do, you need to, do you need to have words about those wheels though? Don't really fit with the car, but I guess it's a bit more like the Lotus of the 1960s. So now we head on to the 11th lap for these drivers. Should have only about two more laps of the session to go. And look at this, Luke Mitchell under some serious pressure from Olav. Olav at the inside. Can he do it? He's going to try and phantom a move to get around him. But the Norwegian cannot get it done this time. Is he up and through? He is going to be side by side. This is where he overtook SC last time round. Can he do it this time? It doesn't seem like he can. Is that a penalty for Luke Mitchell? No, he just keeps ghosting for no reason there. We go on board with the championship leader. Is he going to relegate himself to P2 and allow himself to be overtaken? Well, up the inside, this is going to be a 90 degree right-hander. Sorry, left-hander. And there's going to be contact there between Olaf and himself. But Luke Mitchell is going to be relegated to P2. Is Olaf going to be the first man to win at Blue Moon Bay tonight? We will have two winners. Count them two. And Olaf is now going to have the final lap to himself. As now he pushes forwards. He's got to defend. This is the lap of the gods here. He's got to defend. He's got to make sure that Luke Mitchell slows down enough to have SC attack him. Mitchell trying to go wide, trying to filter back down to overtake him. They're going to be side by side into one, if they can do it, sorry, into two. 44 seconds on the clock. The Norwegian's still ahead. And Luke Mitchell has been slowed down sufficiently enough for SC to come back at him. And sliding sideways as Mitchell. I wonder if he's struggling with load or anything. He's low on fuel. He could be losing the podium here if he's not careful. Luke Mitchell still with the wrong helmet on the graphics. As they Oh look at that SC way off the track there as he tries to carry as much speed as possible to pass him. Remember, he's low on fuel. There could be a chance that Luke Mitchell could lose the podium at this rate. I don't think he will due to the uh, just the nature of the thing. Final lap has begun and now Oli Polly Olaf will become and do what he did last time in Italy. He's going to win the race. The first race, the sprint race, and he does win. From Luke Mitchell and SC. Two Brits and a Norwegian on the podium. Oh no! Rob dropping the P6. Is he in trouble? Rob is out of fuel. P6, he was P4 at the start of the final lap. But Olaf wins as he did in 
the Italian round, last round. Olaf wins again. Ugh, it's a story of what could have been for the Norwegian. He struggled at the start of the season. Now towards the end, he's hit form. Maybe next season, in potentially new cars, he will be having some fun. Final driver crossing the line now, and the race is done. Olaf wins as he did last time. He's by seven positions. He got the fastest lap too. Well done to him. Round 11 goes to Norwegian. Now we take a short break as we wait for the next race. Uh, so there's Rob just saying that he um, span at the final corner there. So on the final lap, he span at the final corner. That's quite upsetting to hear that. Seems like someone's showing off. So the race is up 32 minutes past, so we've got just a little bit of time to relax, get a coffee, and take some time to rest, which I'll be doing. I'll be going to go down and make a coffee for a minute.
I'd like to welcome everyone back to the Mazda MX-5 Championship for the final round of the season here at Blue Moon Bay. We're going to get ready to go to uh, the second race, which will be 30 laps wrong. 30 laps long, not wrong. So 30 laps of pure and intense racing. Um, we saw a bit of struggle in the last race from some drivers seem to be turned into pack racing this time around it should be slightly different if we will have drivers pitting which will be uh, interesting so uh, I think we will see what happens on Ooh, interesting we'll see what happens as we head into the final race drivers are being told to ready up um, ironically because Rob hasn't readied up yet <laughs> so we're going to wait and see I'm saying have a good one. Is he not racing this time around? No, no, he is. He's just logged in. Good. Just for a laugh, shall we look at the live timing? Of a circle map. So there we go. It's a lot of information that means a lot of, I think. See a couple of cars on track, though. means absolutely nothing to me I just talk about racing cars that's all I do so now we just wait for the race to begin in seven seconds we will see the final race of the season beginning here at Bloomin Bay Speedway On pole position is the white and blue car of Wilson, ahead of Fred, ahead of Dylan, ahead of Kale, ahead of Rob, ahead of Victor, ahead of John, ahead of SC, ahead of Mitchell, ahead of Ollie Polly. Now it is pretty cloudy here, the temperature has dropped pretty heavily as we wait for just that moment time. Engine notes rise from the MX-5s and for the final time of the season we are going to go racing now and it's a great start from fred a really poor start from wilson who unfortunately just missed a cut just a little bit a great start from fred who's going to make it into p1 then wilson is going to get swallowed up into turn one as they all go across the banking now three wide four wide i think it's just three let see wilson dill price and what well, seems to be kale going for it kale going for the lead into turn two and they all come flying through and it's still Fred that leads the Red Bull driver with the helmet of a Red Bull driver the drivers all flying through trying to find their find their marks trying to do their best to get through all 10 drivers made it through turn 2 and turn 3 though as you'll come through following Dylan Price no drivers making a sick this time round as you see Kale trying to swing around the outside, Rob trying to get back. I wonder if Luke Mitchell is mathematically going to be able to win the championship. It's up boy sideways for Victor as he was in race one. As they all come battling through and then a body slam there from Dylan Price into Kale. Kale who's going to try and make it into the lead and Fred's going to think, oh for God's sake, nobody hit me. Dylan Price there into P2 as the camber from the final corner is really being aggressive now. And you see Rob who span at the final corner at the final lap of the last race. He's going to make it up into P1 as he goes into it. Has he just officially done it? And no, Dylan Price is officially leading the race. But I think it's Rob just about by a hair. We're going to go four wide if we're not careful. Fred started this straight in P1. He's going to end it in P4. And Rob into P1 now. He's just got to control himself as he comes through the infield section. Lots of pack racing going on. Fred, though, is the fastest man on track. Lap two out of 30 complete. And there's someone wide. It seems to be Kale. Oh, and a huge crash for Fred and for Kale, let's see what happened there and Fred just got it wrong at the apex and they both just went into that and I think I think that looks to be Fred's fault and into P10 falls Fred and Kale is going to think why does this always happen to me Wilson's doing well, Wilson up in the podium positions right now but it's a long old race, he's got to be careful not to make a mistake, Holly Polly the race winner from round 11 Last two wins to his name as he tries to make it through 
and make it. Oh, wow, look at the camber change there as SC passes him. Wilson's in trouble. Wilson's the wall. There's a big contact there between Dylan Price, Wilson, and Ollie Potty. Ollie Potty and SC now making it back onto podium positions. Lots of drivers battling hard. There's John in P6 trying to overtake someone. He has overtaken Dylan Price. Three wide twice now as they come into turn one. SC leads by a hair out of this little pack of racing. And Rob has absolutely disappeared. SC off the track and Wilson making a mistake. Oops, pressed the wrong button there. Try and get the onboard shot of what happened to Wilson here. They just lost it, carrying too much speed, lost it and made contact there. Luke Mitchell flying past them into P6. Where's Luke Mitchell now? P7. As he's been passed once more. He's really struggling, seems to be at this track. Let's jump up here with John, who's trying to pass Victor, who's trying to pass uh, S. Uh, sorry, trying to pass Victor, who's trying to pass. Uh, who is that in front? That is SC, sorry. Completely and utterly cannot see as the drivers all battling harder than ever on lap three out of everything and there you see John to the inside line gonna make contact with Victor and that was inevitably gonna happen no major damage though to either car as Dill Price tries to make his way through a bit further back you see Luke Mitchell versus Kale John trying to pass Victor Victor trying to defend from John trying to go around the outside can he do it no issues there at all. So they're still putting as much pressure on one level as possible. And John heads through, passing Victor up the inside. Pulls John. Can he do it on SC? And then Luke Mitchell lagging slightly in. Victor returning the bump favour there. Victor known for bumping in this league. And he's doing his best to bump his way through. Gonna get filled out wide though, because there was not really a gap for him to slip into. And Fred's come back to join. Hello, Fred. Six seconds uh, is P4 away from the leader. They can all come down though if there's a little spin, little mistake, a half spin, or anything can really affect his time there. So Victor in P5 is the driver we're currently watching. Is he going to be able to make it through? He's so close to the back of John and the Greek driver just soaking up the pressure. He's being helped out a little bit with the draft from SC but no major help nonetheless as they go towards the pool to the inside the line now. And there is he forcing his way through is uh, Victor. Victor does get through and skims the grass for good result just to prove that he's through but he's going to be under pressure from John once more John at the inside and Victor going back up at the inside the old switcheroo as David Croft would say so Victor battling John Victor hassling John as now as they put as much pressure on one another as they can the plane in the background landing. We look at the crowd. Social distancing not happening in GT Sport. How many games now are going to make jokes about social distancing? At the inside, looking at John trying to pass Victor once more. And Dylan Price trying to come back as they come back on here. The camber of that transition is really affecting drivers. Now you see Luke Mitchell sliding and lagging slightly as he tries to pass Dylan Price. He's using John as toe to try and pass Dylan. Dylan on his own. He's going to really start the struggle. Let's have a look at him. And he is going to be relegated to P7. Luke Mitchell into P6. Can the championship leader do any better than P6? At this corner, and there's going to be contact between John, but Luke's got it all wrong as he tries to get past the 100-meter board without destroying it because people need that. And Luke Mitchell losing positions to Dylan Price once more. Drivers are trying their absolute hardest. To continue on, remember lap 30, lap, laps on the clock, sorry, 30, 6 completed.
And there you see up in the background, you see Dylan Price now going to be in a bit of fun now as he tries to pass John and Victor. As we follow another plane that's flying, a very busy airport. I wonder what airport it is. Probably something to do with Florida. Uh, lots of movement there from Victor as he moves across the track. That, that's a little bit unfair from Victor, if you ask me. But, see, trying to go around the outside is John and Dylan Price trying to follow him as well. I wonder whether Victor is going to try up the inside. And he is going to filter him out. But this then comes a problem with drivers don't go to the stewards for things like what Victor did there. You cannot, they won't get told off. And drivers will keep doing it as we're following Dylan Price. Dylan Price losing it slightly, that's going to really affect his run. But to be honest, I don't think it's going to affect much. These two are battling so hard and it's not even for opposing position. John is ahead of Victor now. And Victor sliding and abusing his tyres. Remember, he does have to pit at some point in this race. Current top three are Rob, Olav and SC as they all come through towards the next lap. Let's go on board there as they are sitting in the middle of a track. Lots of movement there from the back end of John. As they try and find their way through, here comes Dylan Price. Dylan Price trying to get his way through. Can he tuck up underneath it? I don't think he can. Wide goes John, and here comes the chance for the orange car. Dylan Price at the inside, making contact with Victor. I think that could have been avoided, but who knows. And aggressively to the inside line falls John, because he knows Dylan's wide. Dylan's going to have to give it up again, the plane's landing. World's busiest airport here, and John is back up into P4. What can Price do? Price doing his absolute hardest ever in contact between Victor and Price and a big smash there from Victor. Shall we watch that back? I think we have to. Let's go on board here. So what happens is, ah, so it could have been a, I think, uh, I think racing incident now since looking at that. Hmm. Interesting. I mean, be intrigued to see what the stewards think of that one. Now you see drivers getting more and more aggressive once more. It seems the two black cars are going to try and go at it as we're watching Del Price battle on with SC. And SC in the racing green car, British racing green car, is going to have to be relegated to P5, sorry P6. And it's actually going to be Luke Mitchell he's battling, not SC, my apologies. As Del Price drops behind Fred, we're on board with Fred here, I thought we were on board with Luke. And Dylan Price is chucking it back at the inside there. And Fred is going to have to give up any chance of overtaking him this time round. There is a nice polystyrene board in the middle of the track there. Marshall should run out and get it, but they're not going to. Of course, video games and social distancing from video games. <laughs> Dylan Price under pressure here from Fred, and it does seem like he's still going to get through. Side by side as they go to drag run, and it seems Fred's very quick on the straights. Side by side still, and more power to the two of them as they go around the outside as Dylan Price tries to hold it. I think that he's going to have to give it up to Fred. Fred on the brakes. Fred is through. Well done to Fred. Quality move there up the inside for the Red Bulls. Wants the driver, but Dylan Price isn't done yet. He wants to pass him back, and I think he is going to be able to get him back. This time round, at least, and he does. Does Fred just chuck it up the inside here? I don't think he'll be able to. There's chaos skimming the grass. Using the lawnmower update that Honda normally give, not Mazda.
Dylan Price versus Fred now. There's going to be a bit of contact here. Door against wheel. And it does seem that Fred had to cut the corner himself there. Lap 10 almost complete. And we see the first of the pitters. And it's the boss. It is Rob pitting. He's going to lose positions. Hand over fist now. See Rob pits. So does SC. Do drivers here. Any drivers here going to pit lane now? Doesn't seem like it's going to be. But they do pass a Rob, who's getting new fuel. Uh, Dill Price is going to pass Fred now at the inside, trying to get the good tracking camera angle. And he does just pass him now into P4 now for Dill Price once more. And off the track goes Victor once more. He's just carrying too much speed into that corner, isn't he? As we're watching Luke Mitchell battling, sorry, we're watching Dill Price battling with Fred and Dill Price going way too deep and Fred's gonna go. Thank you very much, I'll take that position back. So Dylan Price battling hard now with Fred. Is it worth letting Fred through and thinking about the strategy here and trying to save some fuel? Or are they going to pit this time round? What do we think? So we're going to go on board with Fred, who's in P5. That's not five, that's five. John Pitts, do any of these drivers pit? It doesn't seem like they're going to. I see Kale pitting in the background. As now Fred going to try and pass him. The lights are on, the lights are blazing here at 4 o'clock in the afternoon in America. It's not, but you know, there's another plane coming in. Hello, Mr. Plane. It's like they've overused the planes on this one track. There's no way this amount, these numbers of planes fly over a racetrack in America. Unless potentially, you know, uh, Sebring. But at the inside, Paul's Dill Price and Fred coming back at him. This is the battle for P3 with P4 and P5 in tow. Lots of drivers putting as much pressure on each other as possible. We want to take a look at pit lane here and see what pit lane equivalent and equipment we have as it's a NASCAR track. There's a plane landing. Lap 12 out of 30 complete. 28 to go. Racing driver Mafsa. And now, do we see either of the drivers pit? It does seem that we're going to see Dylan Price pit. We're going to go on board with Dill Price as he heads into pit lane now. And the alarm sounds to let them know as he pulls into the 48 box. Where is he? Driver should be arriving any second now. There he is. New tyres, new fuel, where's Dill Price going to come out? He did a very good run on the first stint. New tyres, new fuel, is he going to come out ahead of... Oh, well, Rob's back into P3. He's going to be plumb dead last. Still waiting on the fuel there, and release. And off he goes, the 48. It's a boxed car. He's going to be in P9. So P10 currently is Borson. Who I believe started on pole position. And he's struggling this time out. He really struggled off the line as well. Let's check in with our leader, Oli Polly. He's not pitted as of yet. Has the man who won the first round and into pit lane. He pulls. I want to see what box he's going at. Again, he's in the 48 as well. So, lots of drivers with the 48. Let's jump on board with Fred. Right, says Fred, as he looks towards pit lane, I believe, this time round. The number 13 car. Quite comfortable. Oh no, he's continuing on. No aggressive. P pulls the inside. He's going to be leading the race. Rob is going to retake the net first place position. As we wait for Fred to pit. Polly Polly, the fastest man on track right now. Drivers putting pressure on one another. Let's drop back and have a look at the battle for P7 next. Kale versus Victor. These two are magnetised to each other. 
remember last week their uh, their battle became quite glorious the battle changed to being um, just in the chat to being uh, quite on track so as we keep an eye and watch what these drivers can do they're all going to be putting as much pressure on each other as possible first stint is done now we just have to wait for the racing to resume a little bit sooner rather than later as we wait for drivers to get close we do have drivers close so it seems to be p3 and P2, Groot versus Oli Poli, so that's Rob versus Olive. Olive pulling to the inside line now on Rob, what can he do? As he tries his hardest to go up the inside and I think Rob's going to have to concede this position now, there's no amount of speed Rob can carry to overtake the Norwegian into turn two. But the Norwegian's going to carry too much speed there and then make a mistake. Can Rob get back at him? Let's go on board with Rob. What can he do this time round? The man who's battling for the championship, his championship rival, is currently in P4, but it's looking increasingly like Luke Mitchell is going to win the Mazda MX-5 championship and potentially be moved up the field in the SBR rankings and moved to another division, potentially off the, off the touring cars, who knows? Or off the British touring car. More pressure, more gear changes, everything you can do, can Rob do it? To look to the inside, look at the camber change there, an aggressive switch of the front wheels there and into pit lane pulls Fred. Does he pull into 30, 48 as well? So maybe that's just everyone that's racing. They all pull into 48 and I just don't know it. Rob putting all the pressure now on as we look at Oli Polly under pressure from the man, the myth, the legend. His head's very shiny, it's Rob at the inside. The shiny purple car cannot make it through this time round. Lap 16 out of 30. Just hitting the half distance now as they all come filtering through. Fred has come out relatively high up. He's, well, relatively high up. He's come dead last, apart from Phil Wilson. But it's okay because Wilson is going to be helping everyone out by being awesome. We love Phil Wilson. Now looking at SC versus Luke Mitchell. Got a few battles on track for me. Let's just jump back up, have a look at these guys. Kale versus John. We all know how this one always ends up. One of them is going to head towards the fence if they're not careful. But back up to the lead now as we look. Five tenths of a second separates Rob and his chances of winning this race. Still got a lot of time to go and potentially have a pit stop to go. in this race so lap 17 began as drivers are now putting as much pressure on one another as possible and we wait to see who is going to improve and at the end of the season we go to see who drivers move around the season With the potential of the removal of the MX-5 and changing to a different car, this season could change and be the final one. Could be interesting to see what racing cars we do see next season in the uh, in SBR's third tier of racing. Mm, excuse me. We have MX-5 racing. British Touring Car Racing and GT3 Racing. GT3 takes place on Tuesday nights and the MX-5s and the British Touring Car take place on the same night here on Friday nights. Hosted by myself, JB, and the commentary team from the British Touring Car Series, which is also held here on YouTube streams at the same time. Isn't that amazing? And a mistake from Oli Polly could seriously should miss, mess up his chances of winning this race even more. As we look 
of Rob trying to put more pressure on him. Rob is five tenths of a second away from Ollie Polly now. As he's putting pressure on the back of him. Can he get through and take the race lead? Which he so desperately wants. Is he flashing the lights? Rob is respectfully not flashing lights as he turns the steering wheel to try and affect any chances. Heading on to lap 19. Camber change now. And the transition wasn't very smooth for either car. As they head back on to the new camber of the bankings. It does seem like Rob's going to have the run. Is he going to be able to get to the inside? No tactics like we saw earlier on in the race. Up the inside pulls Rob there as he holds his line for Oddy Poddy. Oddy Poddy does not even go defensive and Oddy Poddy knows that this time around he's going to have to try and get around into turn two. It doesn't happen. Rob versus Oddy Poddy now. This driver's putting as much pressure on one another as they can. Oddy Poddy losing chances as she starts to slow down after that mistake into turn two, I believe it was. It's a battle. Luke Mitchell in P3. I think he's doing enough currently to win the championship, but we will wait for any count back. Any clarification from the um, from the field as we see Phil Wilson pit. We'd have a look at him, but there is a battle for the lead. We will try and get everyone a car at least once. <sighs> Me. Uh, it's not even down to the racing that I'm yawning. My apologies. I've had a busy, long week at work. I'm still working nights. As we now we watch Ollie Potty right on the bump. He's bumping Rob. He's saying, come on, get a move on. Tries to find the gear. And he doesn't want to pass him before the first turn because he knows he'll just get passed again. Let's see if he pops it up the inside. Rob's going to filter up wide on the gravel. Throwing the gravel on the marvels is not going to happen. They're coming up to a lapped car as well. And there he is, Phil Wilson. But remember, he's on fresh tyres and fresh bit of fuel. Wilson shouldn't have a problem with overtaking these guys if he is passed. I think he might be passed by these guys in just a few seconds' time. Lap 20 out of 30 completed. We keep our eyes on the drivers who are putting as much pressure on one another as Superman battling Batman. I don't know who's who in this situation, so I'm just going to stick with that analogy. More pressure for the back end of Groot, and that is in the form of Oli Poddy. Oli Poddy, remember, is a current double race winner with the final race in Italy and the current race here in America. I wonder if Oddy Potty is going to try and go. Oh, pit lane. Pit lane for Rob. The final stop has begun. As we see Rob put into pit lane. So we will see driver stop one more time. Oddy Potty when I grant out line, I think two or three more laps. We see SC pits. SC pitting for another set of fuel. So SC who's coming in, I think for um, just fuel might just be able to do it. No tyres for SC. So SC on a different combat of tyres could be in a good situation here of not losing too much time. Let's jump on board. Show sort of strategy wise with... Oh, did they change tyres on Luke Mitchell's car? Did they change tyres on Rob's car? As he goes side by side immediately out of pit lane, he's battling into P4 though. He gets relegated. Ten laps to go here in America. Ten laps till the end of the season. These drivers all have done an amazing job this season. I don't think we've been disappointed with any of the drivers that we've been seeing here. They've all shown off some great maturity. Granted, most of us are quite mature now. Well... I shout about racing cars on the internet. I'm definitely not mature. Um, as we watch, <laughs> as we watch Rob now putting pressure on the back of Victor, and we wait to see what will happen. As my hair is way too long, it's in the way. Victor into pit lane, and what can Rob do? 
as he pushes forwards. He is in a net P1 right now as we're waiting for this man, this man, Oddy Poddy to pit. Three flags are waving. Remember, Wilson doesn't actually have to get out the way like in Formula 1. This is touring car racing where if he wants to, he can sit in the way. There's no real penalty for it as the touring car marshals and... Um, stewards are just sort of sat there twiddling their thumbs waiting for a big colossal calamity crash waiting for two drivers to pit to find out who's been in this race it does seem like it's going to be rob as we see for transition from anti-camber to camber it's really struggling there and into pit lane falls oddy poddy there's the alarm let's find out where rob is Rob's currently coming through the infield, passing the third sector mark. It's going to be close, depending on what's happening. I think we'll see Oli Poddy come out in P3 in this race. He's going to be passed by SC. And remember, SC pitted just for fuel, no tyres. Oli Poddy, no, Oli Poddy is going to keep the lead. He's going to be battling against John, but Oddy Poddy is going to potentially do the hat trick, which we did not see all season long. Missed one race on commentary due to myself being ill. And that is. This is colossal. Are we going to see the final race of the season be a hat trick of wins for the Norwegian from Italy to the first race here in the sprint race? Is Oddy Poddy going to be the man to win three races in a row? I assume Luke Mitchell might have done it before, but I, I do find it funny to say that we didn't see, so it doesn't happen. Luke Mitchell currently is in P5. With time to go, Luke Mitchell so currently down. He's quite far down the order. Normally, he flies a lot further up by the uh, by the end of the first race. Remember, he didn't even start last this time. Maybe he just always has to start last, and he gets more power. As the time ticks away though, into pit lane pulls John. Alarms waving and Oli Poddy does retake the race lead officially. And he's got quite a distance on Rob. Rob's going to think, how did that happen? SC making it up into P3. And I think he's going to be battling with John as John gets deployed from pit lane in just a moment's time. I uh, know, he's going to be passing John. John gets deployed behind both these drivers. John is going to have to do some work now if he wants to resume his position of P4. See, there's Luke Mitchell battling. There's Victor. We try and wait to see where drivers can show off. Fred's doing well. Back up into P5. Not long to go in this race. Drivers all ticking away, trying to find their positions right. Here's John on board with the Greek driver. Greek driver is putting as much pressure on the back of the Englishman as possible. The British driver ahead, Fred. He's going to do his best to hold on. Let's pop up and have a look at the champion elect, I believe, with Luke Mitchell. Don't tr don't quote me on that. With four laps, with sorry, with six laps to go. We're going to keep watching as drivers put as much pressure on one another as possible. Oddy Poddy's running away. He wants to still win this race. Luke Mitchell wants to make it onto the podium, remember SC is on older tyres. He did not change tyres at the last stop, he's on the soft compound of tyres versus everyone else who's on the super softs. Luke Mitchell wanting to make his way through, we haven't seen much of Mitchell battling this time round. I think we're going to start to see some bits now as they start to head into the final stages of this race. And such uncertainty on the throttle there from Luke Mitchell as he tries his hardest. He does everything he can 
to overtake the driver in front, but SC is currently on the better run. Oli Polly leads on the 26th lap of racing, five to go. Fred going aggressive there, in slightly more, slightly more aggressive defence, or potentially just losing it a little bit out of the final corner. She is, a, she is possible, Connor Daly. See, there is John flying wrap, trying to get the better run on Fred, but Fred saying none of it, and John's off the track. I don't think there was contact there between the two of them. Jump back up and have a look at the leader who's coming through the infield section. Eight seconds separates the two drivers, and I think Rob's in trouble. He's under pressure from SC if he's not careful. And SC under pressure as well from Luke Mitchell. Luke Mitchell potentially could be battling against Rob in a few minutes' time. <laughs> you see Luke Mitchell forcing SC off the track. Remember, SC on the older compound, the tyres are going to start to struggle. And you saw Luke Mitchell with a major lag moment there. Who's got a better top end speed though? When the going gets tough, trust the aerodynamics of the car. SC retaining P3 for right now. Luke Mitchell is the fastest man on track though and he wants to be the fastest man on track in P3. Now it's going to be a right hander, he's going to chuck it round the outside. Can he do it? It doesn't seem like Mitchell's going to be able to this time round but he's got more grip than SC. We can see that right now as the drivers start to struggle a little bit more. We're going to switch off looking at Luke Mitchell's POV just because of the lag. Try and focus on putting as much pressure on everyone else heading to the final stages the laps are ticking down who is going to win this race well it does seem like it's going to be a three win tally for Oli Polly in the final three races of the season Luke Mitchell still the fastest man on track no one can beat that no one I don't think anyone's trying right now we're all just doing their best to See what happens in a mistake, a rare mistake from Luke Mitchell. Carrying so much speed there. We'll just get the mark ready because I want to see what happened there. With the replay is now at the inside. Pulls Luke Mitchell. He carried so much more speed. He's so much speed. He's having to grind against the wall. Luke Mitchell is going to be the fastest man in P3. Give me the gravel there, Luke Mitchell really, god that's some horrendous lag there from Luke. And he's going to be retained, he's going to return to, sorry retained, to be re relegated back to P4. Let's take a look at that again. So through the final couple of corners, I just want to see how it all went wrong for Luke Mitchell. So. Let's see what happens here as he's sliding. It's no real problem, he just understeers straight into the wall. Now you see, heading on to the penultimate lap of the race, which Oli Potty's already started. One more time is what he's thinking before he becomes a double winner. Well, two more times. Is he going to be three-time winner in a row in this series? Gear changes galore as Luke Mitchell starts to lose out chances of a podium. And I think he's got, if unless he can have a mega lap this time round, I think SC will be on the podium once more. And Rob will just snag P2. Well, he's not going to just snag it, but he's going to be okay enough to keep P2 this time round. Unless he does what he did in Autopolis and Brands Hatch <laughs> once more. Time ticking away. The final lap is soon to begin through the penultimate corner into the final corner here. As you see the pressure building in Oli Potty's helmet. 
Oli Poly P1 is going to be crossing the line now for the final lap. The white flag is out here in America. And the drivers are going to have to be aware. This is the final time there. Zappi, Luke Mit yeah, sorry, Phil Mitchell, Phil Wilson, butchering names. So Phil has been lapped. One more to go here before the end of the race. And it seems that there is going to be a move there. P3 has been retained and retaken by Luke Mitchell. Luke Mitchell doing his best, his best job. All he has to do is hold it down for one more lap, as Oli Polly did. Olav looking for his third win in a row. We know where he is on track. We are watching the man who's looking to take three out of three in the last three races. And I think SC, remarkable on the strategy front, is under serious doubt whether he's going to get the podium this time round. We're going to switch off him in a minute because it looks like through the final corner, Oli Polly is going to win for the third time in a row. He's got no other problems. He's had no competition since the final stop. Oli Polly wins here in the final round of the season, the final race of the season. And he wins both races. He is the king of Blue Moon Bay. But who's the champion? Rob Cusson, like it looks to be in P3, it's going to be Luke Mitchell. And I just have to wait. I just have to wait until I get it. No, it's going to be SC. There was a penalty. SC gets, the, gets P3. Luke Mitchell will not make it into P3. Luke Mitchell's in trouble, actually. He's not even here. He's dropping well down the field. What's happened here? Why is he dropping down the field? He's finished. Is this a glitch of some kind? What happened there? Luke Mitchell dropping even further out. He hasn't been that. What's happened? Now we wait to confirm, but Luke Mitchell finishing in P9. Apparently he's still running, but I think he finished in P3. I think that was just a problem on here. Oli Poddy though, for the second time at Blooming Bay, will win the race. Well done to Oli Polly. Now we just have to wait. We just have to wait for just a minute to see whether we heard, whether we hear who the champion is. See a couple of drivers typing in the chat already. Three, four drivers. Dylan Price leaving the room. Luke saying thank you. I think he finished there. Luke, the lag was terrible. Kale leaving the room. Now we wait to see. Just have to wait. We just have to see. Any confirmation about who the champion is? If we don't get it in the next minute. <laughs> Fred, Fred saying that he got a glitch in the pit lane. I don't think we're going to get any confirmation this time around. The drivers are leaving the field. But still. Nonetheless, that has been a thoroughly enjoyable season to commentate on here with the Master MX5 Championship. I thoroughly look forward to seeing what will happen next season. Uh, oh wait, there it is. Luke Mitchell has been confirmed as the champion for the Asda, for the Mazda MX-5 Championship. So well done to him for winning the season. He is going to be doing. He's going to be looking at promoting next time round. But well done to Luke Mitchell. He is our champion. Nonetheless, though, thank you so much for watching, everyone who has watched this season. Thank you to all the drivers and to the people who made it possible. The admins. We couldn't do any racing without them. My name is JB, have a very good time, and before next season, I hope to see you again soon. Ta-ra, guys.